I'm Anika Thomas, the founder and clinical social worker at Kindred Connections Therapy Center. I've been a social worker for over 12 years. I decided to do an entire YouTube channel on my journey from cubicle working social worker to successful entrepreneur. Welcome to my channel. Hey everybody, it's Manika, and welcome to my channel where I help social workers, counselors, and helping professionals deepen their level of self-awareness while increasing their competence and confidence in the profession. So for today's video, the format is going to be a little bit different, but I think you'll enjoy it all the same. Um, so I have a very special interview lined up for you all today, and I'm excited to get into it. Um, so one of the things that I noticed, because it's getting so close to the end of the year, um, and a lot of you are making plans around vision boarding and deciding what you want to do for the new year, you're thinking about your financial goals, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about on today's YouTube, uh, on today's YouTube video. So I know that a lot of you are working side jobs, you have side hustles, you're working um, two jobs oftentimes, because what I think is happening is a lot of you are going to school, you're getting the degree, you're getting the certifications. And what you're finding is when you go into the profession, there's this huge wage disparity that you're noticing from the credential and the degree that you have versus the jobs that are available to you. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring someone on the channel. Uh, uh, Rita Wolfson is going to be who I'm interviewing and she's going to interview herself. She's going to uh, introduce herself in a second. And I wanted to bring her on to the channel because she's someone who's specifically working in this area of social workers and their finances. So I knew that she would be the perfect person who could address what we're seeing in the field and what we're seeing in the profession, um, which is social workers having to kind of struggle between understanding their finances for themselves and also for their clients. So Rita, thank you so much for agreeing to be on the channel today. Thanks for inviting me. I'm looking forward to this. I think you do a great job and you provide a very much needed service for many social workers across the country and around the world. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So uh, what I wanted to do before we get started, I just wanted to read your bio and then we can go ahead and get into the slides that you have prepared for us today. Sure. Okay. Um, so Rita Wolfson is the founder of, of the Financial Social Work Discipline. She's devoted a significant part of her life to pioneering new areas of academic inquiry and transforming her research and experience into practical financial health and wellness programs and materials for social workers and non-social workers. Rita's work goes beyond dollars, cents, debt, budgets and crisis interventions because she knows how debilitating financial problems, stress, anxiety, and trauma are to the physical, mental, and emotional health and well-being. It focuses on the need for clients to heal their relationships with their money and with themselves. She developed this unique process based upon the understanding that clients overwhelmed by financial problems they weren't able to prevent and don't know how to fix aren't in a position to learn or practice new money management skills and tools. Rita's work continues to meet and adapt to the changing needs of clients and the professionals who work with them through financial behavioral health, part of the center's mission to develop and expand the field of financial health and well-being. That is amazing. Thank you so much for your work. I'm so excited to hear from you. I'm so excited you agreed to this interview. So I'm going to turn it over to you so we can go ahead and get into what you prepare for us today. Okay. Let's get started. Let's see, share my screen. We will start. I thought it would make sense to start a little bit at the beginning, give an introduction of a very brief history of financial social work. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to summarize uh, 25 years of work <laughs> uh, but I will do it so that we have some other time if, if there's some other questions you'd like answered. So actually, in just another month, it will be 25 years since I started this, but we're still at 24 years. And I started all of it in 1997 with the word feminomics. Mm -hmm. When I started using that word, lots of people said, there is no such word. But when you create your own word, you also get to create your own definition. And I gave it the definition of the gender of money. 
Hmm. So when I started, lots of people said, there's no such thing as a gender of money. But <laughs> over the years, it became very, very obvious that there is very much a gender of money hmm. because we talk in social work about the feminization of poverty mm. and the fact that poverty does have a woman's face. Mm. So a little levity never hurt anyone, I hope. And I think I always like to share this because <laughs> that does it. Well, yes, if we're talking about the gender of money, it does explain the differences in our salaries. Right. So for me, um, I have seven components of the gender of money. The fact that women earn less, and I included this graphic down on the bottom. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever heard about equal pay day, but every year there is equal pay day uh, for Women in general, white women, black women, Latino women, and you can see in the graphic the differences in the amount of pay uh, that those populations are known to earn. So when you earn less and live longer and are charged very often more for products and services, it probably isn't shocking that the majority of the elderly living below the poverty line are women. Mm. So I go on to explain some of these other reasons. And I ask you to consider the fact that the US Constitution does not guarantee equal rights for women. Mm. So back then, uh, a lot of people said, one, there was no such thing as financial social work. And I could accept that because until I coined the phrase, there was no such thing as financial social work. Mm. But a lot of social workers told me social workers shouldn't talk about money. Mm. And I really didn't understand how anybody could say that based on the 12 grand challenges of social work, every single one has a financial component mm. because it does cost money to do good. Yes. So just, um, I forget, in the past month or two, you'll see we do a free um, webinar every month. And just recently, I guess it was September, I started these um, the, well, I did this webinar, Social Workers and Money. We need to talk about it. And we do need to talk about it yeah. because, well, I'll get into that in a few minutes. And so now we have a monthly free group of anyone who, who in the helping professionals, social workers or others, where we talk about money. Okay, so... I mentioned that free webinar that we do each month and we were averaging about six to 800 registrations every month. And then COVID came along and I recognized the need to do something around COVID and money. This was in April, I think 2020. And we started promoting that uh, what I call it, the um, coping with the financial uh, realities of COVID-19. And it was as if our profession and lots of other people woke up to the fact that there will be financial repercussions. And of course, by now we're seeing many of them and then came Black Lives Matter. So for our COVID webinar, we had over 12,000 people register Wow. Technology just couldn't handle it. It was totally crazy. Yeah. And we did one on social and economic justice and had over 6,000 people register. Mm -hmm. And so it's been exciting. I could 
live very well without needing any of these really challenging social issues in our lives. Um, but they're here and we're here and we want to do something about it. So as a result, um, of course, we were in many of these countries before, but um, we are across in every state across the country and we're in England, Finland, Australia, Japan, Canada. So that's, as you know, Monika, that that's very fascinating. It's really cool. And, <laughs> and it's, I believe that considering the different um, types of money in all of these countries and the different situations, I really think it's be because it's, it's a behavioral model. Mm -hmm. And certainly when I started all of this, honestly, no one was talking about money in certainly in social work mm -hmm. um, and in really there just was not that emphasis. Um, and now everybody's talking about money. Well, everyone in this industry and in this, this area of financial education, financial literacy, financial accountability, um, capability. Um, so it is different, but financial social work is unique. So let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about financial social work. So we know, and you know, that no one chooses to have money problems, but sadly, most people do. Right. Because we continue to raise generation after generation of financially illiterate men and women. Mm. It's, it's so unbelievable to me. Wow. Yeah. After 24 years and so many more people understanding the need for financial education, financial health and wellness, I really classify us as financial health and wellness. We go way beyond financial education and literacy. But the schools don't want to teach it. They think the family should teach it. The parents, um, I've watched your YouTube, some of your videos, and I love when you talk about um, uh, I'll use two words that I use all the time myself. I found it so fascinating. Mm -hmm. Confidence and competence. Confidence. Yes, yes. You, if you download some of my ebooks, you will see that in them because those are very important qualities. Mm -hmm. And families and parents, particularly those struggling financially, they don't have the confidence. They don't have that confidence. Right. And the schools, it's, it's the schools really, this is not a debate that's going to be resolved anytime soon. But I think that we as social workers have the skills and the tools and the education and the experience, right? Yes. I love that. Well, money is always the elephant in the room. It is a presence. And no matter how hard we try not to think about it, it is you know, we may not wake up and we're going to talk in a minute about your relationship with your money because we all have a relationship with our money. Yeah. So we may, but we may not think of it that way. But so many people wake up worried about their financial circumstances or don't sleep during the night because of their financial circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so for me, financial social work is about so much more than dollars, cents, debt, math, budgets, and crisis intervention. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have to do crisis intervention. That's, that's an important piece of what we do. But my vision and my dream, certainly for all of our students, our graduates, and for all of social work, is to be more proactive. Yeah. We have crises because we're so reactive, right. not so much us as a profession, but our clients, you know, they've gotten themselves into a difficult place and now we're trying to help them get out of it. Right, that's right. Sadly, it is right. 
Um, so financial social work is at the intersection of social work, politics, the economy, gender, economic, and social justice, and all financial inequity. And we know how much of that there is. And these are just a few of the reasons that they exist and that financial social work exists. So my work explores the fundamentals of financial health, the thoughts, feelings, attitudes, beliefs, experiences, and values that drive financial behavior. Mm -hmm. And for me, financial behavior is how we earn, spend, save, share, and borrow. And so we have the ability to work with clients in any of those areas. And each of them presents a different perspective and outcome for our clients. So the work is heavily psychosocial. Mm. It is a behavioral model because until and unless behavior changes, nothing changes. Now we know change isn't simple, mm -hmm. but change is always possible. Right. And we want to help people feel less hopeless and helpless. And so at the very heart of all of it, and of everything I do, focus on our relationship with our money and our relationship with ourselves. Very often, organizations and helping professionals come from that perspective of you need a budget. Mm -hmm. Do you need a budget? Yes, you know that. Mm -hmm. And most of your viewers all know that. But budgets are not all that engaging. That's right. <laughs> and they've already, been, most of our clients have been told numerous times they need a budget. Yes, they do. But what's really important, and it doesn't matter how wonderful your program is, and there are wonderful programs, if we don't engage the client, if the client doesn't understand why he or she is in the position they're in, and understand and identify where they'd like to be in the future so that we can develop this relationship with them and heal that relationship with money and with self, if you don't feel good about yourself, you're not likely to have the hope and belief that things can change or to put the effort and the time into changing it. So yes, you do need a budget, yeah. but only when you understand its value. We consider in this society, we see it as punitive. Oh no, I did something wrong. You did something wrong. You need to put this in a budget. And the statistics show that budgets are very limited in how much they're used, but we should encourage it. Mm -hmm. But we should build that foundation first yeah. for why it can change your life. So my motto is interactive, reflective, and very strength-based. It's educational, motivational, very supportive. It's holistic, multidisciplinary, and healing. So it's hopeful, helpful. It works with individuals, and it's great in groups also. So the process is about recognizing and taking ownership of your financial health and future. It is about healing your relationship with yourself, mm -hmm. self-discovery, self-care, uh, financial self-care. Uh, we'll drop a, a new ebook in January um, on the five secrets of financial health and well-being. And it will include some more on financial self-care. Uh, we have recordings on self-care, financial self-care um, programs that we've done and they're on um, 
our website. Okay. So the key responsibilities of a financial social work connect clients to their money. We are so disconnected from our money. We don't see it. We don't touch it. It makes it pretty easy to avoid it and allow it to spiral out of control. And every day there is some new way to help you um, build that. Mm. Uh, if you're familiar with the latest, it's, um, they call it uh, buy now, pay later. Yes. <laughs> back in the day, that is how they started promoting um, credit cards. Mm. Um, buy now, pay later. But now you see all those companies, Amazon, every place else, break it into four smaller payments and they market it as it won't affect your credit score. It's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Just know it's not a good thing. I can't, I don't have the time to go into the details now. But they need a place where someone's willing to talk about money. Think about it. Where can you go and talk about money? Well, let me think, pretty much no place. Yeah. So, um, we need to be able to talk about money, have that confidence, be comfortable talking about it, know the basics of money management. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're finding it helpful, please like, subscribe, or share it. I wanted to share one new resource with you that I have available on my website, and it's my monthly bill payment tracker. What the bill payment tracker is going to help you do is going to help you begin taking that first step to organize and take control of your finances. So it's divided up into 12 months, and it allows you to write down all of your income and all of your expenses. So for your income, that's gonna be all of your side jobs, side hustles, part-time, jobs, you running your business on the side, everything that you're doing to bring money in. And then it's also going to look at all the places where your money is going out. So it's going to be that very first step that you're going to take to again, gain control over your finances. So if you think this will be helpful for you, then please visit my website at www.monikathomas.com forward slash bill pay. And you can check that out to see if it would be helpful. We're always planting seeds of financial behavioral change. We know that change doesn't happen overnight, does happen over time. We need to know how financial circumstances impact clients physically, emotionally, mentally, socially, because it does. It absolutely does. And we, if we don't include that in our work, we are not really taking care of our clients, we're not really doing the best we can for them. So we need a non-judgmental environment to practice it in. Safe, non-judgmental. We need to engage clients for the journey and into that journey to greater financial health and empower them in taking control of their money and gaining control of their lives. Yes. So practicing it is about combining psychosocial skills with financial knowledge gained through our certification, role modeling, financial confidence and confidence, I told you, um, <laughs> empowering clients to take ownership. It's, it's we, we don't fix anybody. We want to help clients feel confident and confident of, about creating a better financial future and giving them the tools and the skills to do that. Mm -hmm. Helping clients identify why they are where they are today and where they want to be tomorrow. Those are just some of the things. It's, it's very real social work about meeting the client where the client is. Mm -hmm. You need to understand clients' reluctance, resistance, shame, and guilt around their financial circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's where the hopelessness comes from. Yes. So clients need that safe place to talk about money, new and better coping tools and resources, someone to support them on their money journey. They need to know they won't be judged for past financial mistakes and they need somewhere to heal and to turn their lives around. So consider this, this is important. 
no one can or needs to know everything about money. So that's the good news. And it's the honest news. Mm -hmm. But everyone needs to know certain things about money. Mm -hmm. I may, well, forget me, but you may need to know certain things and your colleague, your, your partner, you know, the people you work with and everyone in the audience. There are some things that are pretty basic that we all need to know about debt, credit, saving, um, but we don't need to know everything. Right. And, and by helping clients understand that, it's not as intimidating because money is very intimidating. Mm -hmm. So I tried to keep this to a minimum. So we're almost finished, I think. We have a personal, professional. I think we have a real ethical responsibility to ourselves and our clients to address the financial component of mental, behavioral, and emotional health issues. Mm -hmm. Financial social work has its roots in the trans-theoretical model of change, yes. the transformative model of learning and mindfulness, combined with financial literacy. It's a really powerful toolbox of evidence-based practices in which to engage with change at all levels of social work practice. And our graduates work with every population and, and in every, it's, it's very creative work. It really is meeting the client where the client is. Um, and it's used on, on a micro level, meta level, and a macro level. We have graduates doing all types of work. So given the importance <clears throat> and the impact of finances on clients, agencies, and communities, financial social work should be considered a key component of social work education and a core competency. One of the most frequent things I hear from students and graduates is I wish I had known this five years ago, right. 10 years ago, before I got into so much that, um, and there's just no place to learn it. And, and, and truthfully, clients have so many needs and we have so many responsibilities, particularly working in agencies and organizations. Again, though, it's really about the money. Yeah. Every, every presenting problem has some component. I agree. Of financial problems, trauma, anxiety. Mm -hmm. So it should be studied and sought after as a key skill yeah. in the clinical world. So I wanted to tell your viewers of all of the free resources that we offer. So every month we have a free uh, webinar. All those are recorded on our website. And actually, I do believe they're on our YouTube channel. Okay. Which I'll, I don't frequent. Yeah, but I'll leave a link to your YouTube channel um, at the end of the video, as well as a link to the Financial Social Work website and then to the upcoming training so people can access that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We also have the wisdom and words of financial financial social work graduates um, who write essays about anything that interests them around money. And we get a lot of views on those. Um, the certification includes um, a monthly Zoom meeting uh, where we do a training or a case study. Uh, we break into groups. We learn what everybody else is doing and everybody's doing something different and it is my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, a, for our students and graduates, we have the Financial Social Work Professional Network on Facebook. Um, we do so many, we have lots of eBooks, we have okay. great eBooks. So I 
thought I would just finish up with our financial social work affirmation. Mm. It really captures the essence of my work. Just for today, I will love myself enough to face my fears, practice self-acceptance, and embrace hope. I will silence my inner critic, speak my truth, and make peace with myself and my past. Just for today, I will give myself permission to eliminate toxic people, beliefs, and behaviors from my life. And just for today, I will prepare for a better tomorrow by healing my relationship with my money and with myself. And I believe, yes. So I will stop sharing and we will be back here. All so. Right. so good. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate everything that you shared. Um, oh, so I have a couple questions that I do want to ask. I, I think this should be embedded into, into our core social work competencies. Like I absolutely think it should be a part of the core curriculum that we learn when we're in school because it's so important. Like everything that you laid out, not only for our clients, but um, one of the videos that I created, um, it, it's called Four Things to Expect in the Social Work Profession. And I'll, I'll leave a link to that video as well. But one of the first things that I mentioned in that video about what to expect is we have to expect that it's going to be our role and responsibilities to teach clients these, these skills that, that we're wanting them to learn. So skills around budgeting and financing and money management, enrolling their children in school, when we're working at a very micro level, the expectation is that we have we possess the skills in order to help the clients. But what you just share in terms of our finances, we don't get this education to be able to help our clients. So I know that. I watched that video and, and you make a point that you remind me of a point that I would like to share is that I created the certification so that I would know that all of our students and graduates had the knowledge, the skills, the tools to improve their own financial futures yes. as well. So, so that they could build that confidence and competence. So they don't feel um, like imp they're imposters. Yeah. That's, that, that is something that, that does come up uh, from time to time, um, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I try to have our graduates say, I am a financial social worker. Because just like the fact that I said, you don't have to know everything about money, but you do know, need to know, know some things about money. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing wrong with saying, let me get you the answer to that. Right. Again, we don't have to know everything, mm -hmm. but when we know nothing. Yeah. And I think one of the questions you had in your list, that might've been the fifth one, you asked, how does this affect social workers? Mm -hmm. Well, we all know that we pay as much for our degrees as all the other professions, Yes, but we don't get paid in the same manner. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have so much burnout. And it's why we have social workers with a lot of financial problems. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned very quickly, I need to make sure that any women we certify um, has that knowledge and yeah. can have a better life him or herself, as well as ha having clients do that. That's so amazing. I, th I think that's so crucial. And that's one of the reasons why I talk about self-awareness, because we have to be able to have those skills first. So I, I just thank you so much for creating this model. I'm I'm always fascinated. I love models. I love like following processes and, and seeing how you can move people through a, a change process. So I really like the fact that it, not only is it practical, like you can kind of see the steps and see the phases that you can walk yourself through and then walk a client through. So I really appreciate that. Um, so I, I knew when you did the presentation, we were probably going to answer a lot of the questions. Um, but one of the other questions that I did want to ask you, and then after this, we can um, kind of close out 
is what do you think some of those limiting beliefs are that social workers have that they bring into their work about themselves in their own financial situations? Well, that they don't have the information. They don't know it and they might do something wrong. They might cause more problems. Look, there's so many other things to address where we might feel more confident and confident. Yeah. Right. It's true. I saw that really early on. Um, like why talk about money? A lot of times, social workers helping professionals are in very similar circumstances. Mm. And so who am I to teach someone this information? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an important component, I believe, of everything we do. And it's not about growing wealth as much as it is about health and wellness. Yes. Right. Yeah, I totally I agree because we know that finances, like you mentioned before, can absolutely affect our well-being. And I love the fact when you said thinking about your finances, that those are the things that keep you up at night, that disrupt your sleep and your eating and create anxiety. So you're so right. I don't know that as social workers, we're having these conversations enough. So I, I appreciate this. Well, I've enjoyed doing it and getting to know you and you can visit our website. You'll put that link in. We have so many free things mm -hmm. and the certification is beautiful. It's interactive. Um, and you can use all the original materials with your clients. I mean, it has a lot of value and it's a great investment in yourself. We need, it is about self-care, financial self-care. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that I leave a link to all of the information that Rita shared today, the financial social work website. Um, will they be able to access the Facebook group? No, that's for our students and graduates. Okay. But we do have a Facebook page. Oh, okay. So you can access the Facebook page. And then if there's any social workers out there who are interested in the certification, I'll make sure I leave, a, again, a link to the website so that you'll have the information to learn more about the certification, what it entails, and if it's something that will be a fit for you um, and integrating that into your social work skills. So thank you so much again, Rita. Is it any last words that you do want to leave uh, the audience before we wrap up? Stay close to your money, pay attention to your money and make sure that it works for you. When your money works hard for you, you don't have to work as hard for your money. Mm. And there's a million things I would love to say, but I'm just going to close by saying thank you for this opportunity. And people can chat me from our website. You can email me from there. You can call me. Okay, thank you so much for making yourself available. Thank you for pioneering this amazing work. I think it's such a great resource for social workers all across the world. I encourage all of my listeners, all of my viewers, please get in touch with Rita through her website. Learn more about the resources that you can use for yourself to increase your competence and your confidence. And then think about how you can translate that knowledge and information to the work that you're doing with your clients. And that can be at the micro, meso, or macro level, as, as Rita mentioned. So I thank you all so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you all will share this with um, social workers in your audience. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, be well. Mm -hmm.